What is going on you guys? It's Ashley and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I really wanted to do a trend that I've been seeing all over Instagram where you do more of a matte, very bronzy, neutral look. And I know what you're thinking, oh my God, not another neutral look. I'm not gonna do a neutral look. I'm gonna do a complete 360 of that and I'm gonna go on the completely opposite side of the color spectrum and I'm gonna do a all matte look but I'm gonna incorporate color but still keep it matte, of course. So I'm really excited. Today I will be playing around with the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette. I know what some of you guys are probably thinking, why would you wanna do an all matte look when there are just so many beautiful shimmer shades within this palette? I know sometimes you have to go off in the deep end and take the plunge when no one else wants you to so that's what I'm doing today. I will be playing playing around with this palette though and I'm super, super excited. I love that there is a mixture between pastels and also like deeper colorful shades. So that's what we're gonna get into today. I hope you guys are excited and if you guys are excited, of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that way YouTube will notify you when I upload, which is every Monday and Wednesday, two times a week, every single week. Did you guys miss that? No? Okay, only me? All right, anyways, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Come a little closer, my friends. Come a little closer. Now that we got that good zoom, we're gonna jump into the eyes. I do want you guys to know that I did already apply my sunscreen off camera. This is the one I love. This is the one I've been using. I really like this. If I can find it on Amazon or anywhere else, I will have it listed down below for you guys. It's tinted as well. So on those days where you don't wanna wear like anything on your face, this gives you a really nice tint. And it also protects your skin against the UVA and UVB rays. So with that, I am gonna go in with the eyes. I do wanna prime though. To prime my eyelids, I will be using the Anastasia eyelid primer I do really like this primer it is very very stark white so I do recommend that you guys set it down with some kind of face powder to kind of neutralize the tone and that's kind of what I'm gonna go with I'm just gonna take a fluffy all over shader brush and just tap the eyeshadow all over the lid and up underneath the brow bone as well now that my lids are set down with the slightest bit of powder, I'm gonna go in with the very first shade from the palette called Wow. It is that really beautiful yellow shade. I don't know, that yellow has just been calling my name since I opened the palette. So I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna put that in my crease to be my transition shade. I love yellow. Like whenever I see a yellow in a palette, I'm just like, okay. I'm using you which reminds me i really hope to get the uh -huh honey palette by ColourPop. i'm like trying not to buy makeup i'm really trying not to be so wasteful when it comes to products so if it's sent to me i'm gonna be like thrilled but if it's not i may still buy it even though i'm trying to go on a no buy i don't i don't even know how that's gonna work for me you guys i just love to buy makeup even though i have so much already here okay so now that i have a nice transition going the next shade i'm gonna take from within the palette is called i know i don't even know why he would call it that actually i do know why he would call it that but it's a little vulgar you know anyways i'm gonna pick up that neon shade and i am going to put this in the crease as well but i'm not gonna take it above that yellow that is looking really really pretty i guess my next step now is to really just seamlessly blend that neon with the yellow a little bit more so i'm going to pick up just a little bit of the yellow and i'm just going to go in small circular motions just to melt these two colors together like i want them to be blended and seamless I'm going to switch over to using an M507 and you guys, I'm really going to intensify this area right here because I want this to just stand out and pop. Like this is probably one of my favorite colors from within the palette because it definitely leans like very, very neon, which I like. Like I never play around with neon, so this is like different, so I have to take advantage. Again, I'm going to go right back into that brush. This is an M433 and I'm just going to you know, go in small circular motions just to get that blend going. I'm actually really liking this. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go into the shade called Suck, which is more of a vibrant orange shade. And I am going to really pack this on, on the outer V right here. You know what, I think it'll be fun to incorporate some red. So I'm gonna take the shade called Licorice on an M507 and I'm gonna lightly buff this right here on the outer V just to, you know, give it a different effect, different vibe, because it's looking very orange, very sunset. And that's not really what I'm going for. So 
rewind. So I will say the look is looking really, really nice, but it's looking very fiery. It's looking very warm. So I definitely wanna add another color into the mix. So I am gonna go in with a little bit of the Anastasia eye primer. Now what I love about this eye primer is that it primes the lid, but it's also a very fluid primer. So it's very, very easy to use to actually cut the crease. So I am gonna take a little bit of this on a flat shader brush and I'm just gonna pat this all over the lid. You guys have seen me cut my crease a million times. So with the power of editing, girl. If only I could like snap my fingers and my makeup would be completely done. Do you know how much time I would save a day? Like magic. But unfortunately the world doesn't work that way. So uh, let's go ahead and move on. I do want to pick up the shade called Bubblegum. That pink shade right there. I think it would look amazing with this look. So I am going to go in with an M507. I'm just going to kind of dust off whatever is on it. And I'm going to take Bubblegum. And I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to start blending it inwards. So this is a really like accurate representation of bubblegum. When I tell you all matte looks distinguish good eyeshadows from bad eyeshadows, good blenders from bad blenders, because it is very difficult to get a very seamless blend with all matte shades, like so difficult. But we're doing it today, girl. Honestly, I'm really glad I decided to add this pink into the mix because this look was starting to take a turn and it was starting to look like every single warm look I've ever filmed on my channel. So I was like, no, you need to use a different color. So I'm glad I went in with the pink. So the last shade I'm gonna use on my lid is this one right here called Good Morning. It definitely leans a little bit more on the soft pale pink side like super pale pink it's definitely not white it definitely has like a hint of like rose pink and i am just gonna lightly tap it on the very inner part just to brighten up this area i am gonna switch to a different brush this one is by anastasia all i can see that it says is swish and i'm just going to take a little bit of that shade called good morning and i'm really gonna push it closest to the edge where I cut the crease because I really want this to be a little bit more defined and then just lightly blend it into the bubblegum pink. Now that we have something good going on with the eyes, let's actually work on the skin. Now, I am gonna go in with a oil. Like this is the, what, Ferris Ali Rose Gold 24 Karat Gold Infused Beauty Oil. And the reason I am using this as opposed to a primer first is because I really want to hydrate the skin before I go in with all of my mattifying products. I feel like that's the key to wearing an all matte look. You wanna make sure your skin prep is really, really good. You wanna be well moisturized. So I am gonna take a little bit of this oil on my cheek. <laughs> there was barely anything in there. Oh. oh my God. It's on my shirt. It's on my shirt. Oh my God. I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm just gonna kind of work this beauty oil into the skin. I literally can't get over how good my skin feels after every single time I use a beauty oil. Like, oh, so good. I'm actually gonna let that sink and penetrate into the skin. So I'm gonna wait about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll move on to the rest of the face. So let me take a break. Let me try to get this stain out of my shirt, you guys. Ugh. So it's actually been several hours later and I couldn't get the stain out. You can still see it and I'm sad because I really like this shirt and it just upsets me that I won't be able to wear it with this big ass stain on it. Like. Oil, don't mess with oil, don't, because it does not come out of clothes. If you guys know of something that can get it out of clothes, let me know because I wanna buy that because I'm always, literally, I'm always dropping stuff on my shirt, I'm always staining shirts, I'm always messing shirts up before I even get to wear them out of the house. So, rant over. Let's actually go in with some primers. Now I have two different primers here. One is from NYX, the other one is from L'Oreal. I'm gonna go in first with the NYX Shine Killer. I am gonna put this in my T-zone. I really wanna combat the shine because typically throughout the day, I do get oily here in my T-zone. So I am gonna really focus the Shine Killer right here in the very center. I actually really like this primer. I do feel like it is very effective. So I am putting it right here in my T-zone. And then for the rest of my face, I will be using the Infallible matte lock now I do like this primer but it's not like my favorite I do like that it's not an over drying matte formula do you guys know like those primers you put on and they're super duper matte and they make your skin feel really dry well this ain't it sis. so that's a really good thing it definitely feels more hydrating on the skin and then once you start to work it in it starts to feel silky which I like so I like to just put that right out 
here also around the perimeter of my face let's actually move on to color correcting i have been using this a lot this is our no flaws under eye concealer in the shade peach this is the lightest shade and i am going to take this right here underneath my eye what i like about this concealer is that it is fairly light so it's very very easy to cover up so it's not like bright orange or anything like that and it still gets the job done so I'm really just focusing this here. I'm also gonna take this color corrector alongside my mouth and also on my upper lip because I've struggled with a mustache all my life. No, but really I have. Oh my God, I have to tell you guys a story. Okay, when I was in elementary school, right? I liked this boy and I had the biggest crush on him and he ended up telling me and also my friends that he didn't like me because I had a mustache. And it was literally the saddest thing ever because I went home and cried. Yeah, I did have a mustache, but I'm Hispanic and a lot of Hispanic women have mustaches and I didn't know what to do. So in elementary school, all the way through middle school and some of high school, I did just shave my mustache off because I was so embarrassed and I couldn't believe that that boy didn't like me because I had a mustache. I don't think I've ever told anyone that. Anyways, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of loose translucent powder now. This one is by CoverGirl. This is one of their brand new powders. I haven't really gotten the chance to experiment with this much, but I'm gonna take a little bit and just kind of dust it over top of that color corrector to really set it down in place. I do find this method to be very effective. I do find that it sets down the color corrector so that way it doesn't slip and slide when I put on foundation. Now I do wanna note that I'm not putting on too, too much of this powder it's just a light dust to set it down and in place let's jump into foundation i will be using this by juvia's place this is the i am magic velvet matte foundation again we are going for an all matte look so i felt like this foundation was really going to do the trick for us i am in the shade capri 630 in case you guys were interested in my shade again a little bit of this stuff does go a very long way i do have a full video dedicated to actually reviewing this foundation so check it out if you guys haven't seen it I will be using the Juno & Co sponge to apply it. And I'm gonna start in the center and work my way outwards. Ah! I already feel like I put on way too much. But you know what? If there's a will, there's a way. And we're gonna blend this out. And we're also gonna look hella flawless in the process. I actually think I may have put on the wrong color foundation. I actually think I'm in the shade 620. Fess, not 630 Capri, so by the power of editing, so I did go ahead and put my hair up because it was a situation I had the wrong foundation color on. There was foundation in my hair. I really just had to fix it up for you. So again, I did switch to 620 Fess instead of Capri. Capri was like three shades too dark for me. And in the moment when I was blending it out, I was like, hold up, like you look like an Oompa Loompa. You need to rewind backtrack and pick a different shade so that's what i did i am going to move on to concealer i will be using the jouet essential high coverage liquid concealer in the shade creme cafe i do really like this concealer because it is a full coverage concealer and since i am going for like a very full coverage matte look i felt like this would be appropriate i do like to take it underneath the eyes chin nose and forehead I'm gonna take my elf sponge to blend out the concealer just because it is a little softer than the Juno & Co sponge. Honestly, if you guys haven't tried the sponge by elf, you guys are missing out on something really special because it is so good, like incredibly good. I'm just lightly bringing the concealer up, but I'm not gonna sharpen this edge too much just because I don't want it to be like sharp, you know? Okay, now for this look, I definitely feel like it's necessary to go in with a lot of powder since we are trying to go for more of a matte, very flawless look with absolutely no shine. So for powder today, I will be using the one by CoverGirl just because I do want to experiment with it more. Again, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this powder. I don't know if I'm gonna love it. Hopefully I don't self-sabotage myself by using this, but I'm gonna dip my sponge into that powder and then just bake underneath the eyes by pressing this powder in place. Now, I do wanna note that this foundation is a velvet matte foundation. It definitely doesn't have like an overly matte feel, so I will be taking this loose translucent powder by CoverGirl and using it to set my entire face. 
so far i will say i do like this covergirl powder like it's not getting crepey or anything like that and i feel like it's setting the foundation down very nice y'all i am matte like my face is all the way matte and normally i don't go for a vibe like this but i'm doing it for the sake of the video i am going to go in with an additional powder this is by charlotte tilbury this is the airbrush flawless finish powder in the shade two and i'm just going to go over that translucent powder and dust away any that i still have sitting on the skin for bronzer, I'm sure you guys probably all guessed this, I will be using my Fenty bronzer in the shade Shady Biz to bronze up the skin because this is a completely matte bronzer with absolutely no shimmer in it. And I'm just going to hit my temples. I'm also going to take a little bit of this bronzer here and go in big circular motions and just connect it. Also going to take just a little bit of the bronzer alongside my nose and then clean it up with some translucent powder. For blush, I will be using this by Flower Beauty. This is one of the Flower Pot Powder blushes in the shade Peach Primrose. You guys, this is one of my favorite blushes from Flower Beauty. And I am using this shade in particular because it is an all matte shade and it's peach. And I feel like peach cheeks will really complement this look very nice. By the way, I am using that sheer powder by Smashbox. Highly recommend for blush, like perfect brush for blush. We definitely need to go in and finish off the lower lash line. So I'm going to pick the shade called and I am going to push it closest to the lash line. Then with an M507, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the shade called the bubblegum and I'm really going to smoke it out. Going in with a little bit of this orange called suck, I am going to push this closest to the very outer edge on my lash line. So right here. Now I know I said I didn't want sharp edges, but I did take a little bit of that loose translucent powder by CoverGirl and put it right alongside that shadow to just clean it up a little bit. Why not? We're here, might as well ball out. While I let that bake there, I'm just gonna kind of dust away underneath my bronzer and also my nose, cause it has been sitting there for a little bit. I'm just picking up the shade called Virgin and I'm really packing it on the very inner part. I know it's matte, but I kind of want to highlight there. Now, normally I will put like a shimmery champagne or a shimmery white shade right in this area, but since I can't use shimmer today, I thought a matte white might work very well and it honestly doesn't look too bad. Oh my God, do you guys see that? Like I really did highlight the inner corner. It looks so different when you don't apply a shimmer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the MAC, uh, what is this? This is the Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. I'm going to pick up the shade called Emphasize, which is definitely more of a matte shade. And I'm going to use this to highlight today. I'm going to put a little bit of Emphasize on the tip of my nose. And I'm also going to take some down the bridge. On an A22, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the shade called Emphasize. And I'm just going to run it right here to highlight. Also on my chin and center of my forehead. Because why not? Honestly, you guys, I am loving the way that this makeup look is coming out. Like, all matte, who would have thought? Like, I am obsessed. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to go in with a little bit of mascara. I'm just going to use the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara on my upper and lower lashes. And then I'm going to pop on a false lash. I have two styles here. This is the Lily Lash for Sephora Collection in the style Rome. And then I also have a classic in Miami. So I'm going to decide off camera and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So for this look, I did opt for the Lily Lashes for Sephora collection in the style Rome. Honestly, I really like this lash. Like it's not like too, too dramatic if you get me. And I think they look really, really good. Um, anyways, let's move on to the lips and then we can wrap things up. I do have these new liquid lipsticks by L'Oreal. This is their Pro Matte Liquid Lipstick. And I want to say this is the Macaroon Collection. They smell like macaroons. By the way, I did a full lip swatch video on the collection on my Instagram TV. So if you guys want to check that out, definitely follow me over on Instagram TV. It may or may not be up by the time you watch this video, but if it's not up, just know that it is coming. I have three shades here that I think will look insanely gorgeous with this look. I think I'm just going to opt for this pink shade right here and I may even dab a little bit of the light one in the center. 
We'll see. Before I go in with a liquid lipstick, I am gonna go in with a little bit of lip liner. This is just MAC Strip Down. By the way, this lip liner isn't meant to act as anything else other than a guide, like you're not meant to see it. I'm gonna put the liquid lipstick directly over it. I don't know what it is. Anytime I go in with bright colors, I always just get out of the lines. I go off-roading and things get crazy, so I always like to lay down a lip liner just so that way I know not to take it past that lip line. By the way, the color I'm using is 828. So if we're being completely honest, I feel like this looks really good. I feel like adding in the light color in the middle would just be a little bit too much. So I am gonna finish things off with a little bit of setting spray. I will be using this by Maybelline. This is their brand new makeup setting spray. It has a matte finish, and it says that you get up to 16 hours of wear, so. Ooh, love it, okay. Let me fix my hair, let me get myself together, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the completed look. Wowzer, that's all I could really say. I did just zhuzh up my hair and I took a step back because I really wanted to get a feel for the look as a whole. And let me just say, after looking at it in my viewfinder, like I need to film more all matte looks like this more often. I don't do them as much as I should and I am really, really feeling it. Honestly, sometimes I feel like I just get caught in the moment of doing highlighter, highlighter, highlighter that I don't always realize that it may or may not be the best look for me because it really does accentuate all of my texture. I definitely want to play around with more matte looks. So if you guys want me to do the all neutral, very bronzy, all matte makeup look, let me know. I do quickly want to touch on the Jawbreaker eyeshadow palette. I was very impressed with this palette, but again, I am always impressed with Jeffree Star's formulas. His matte formulas are out of this world. They don't, they don't get choppy. They don't get blotchy. They don't skip or anything like that, which is why I decided to use this palette in an all matte makeup look because I just knew that the matte formula was going to perform so incredibly well. I am going to film more looks with this palette over on my Instagram TV, so make sure you guys are following me. Do I feel like you guys need to run out and get this? I don't think so, um, and that's not from the standpoint of me feeling like it's bad. I just feel like if you're into color, this is definitely a possibility. I do like that it has a mixture between pastels and also your typical colorful shades. So I feel like this would be a staple colorful palette in my personal collection, but it's all about preference. Like if you like color, go get it. If you don't, then honestly, you're not even gonna like this. So those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys did, y'all already know what to do. Smash the like button, click that bell, subscribe to my channel. It is free, and until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces.